Hi, this is Dan Heisman. We're continuing with our series of YouTube videos to help you improve your chess game. Today I thought we'd start by looking at some common pawn structures. And when people say pawn structures, they usually mean structures that can come out of the opening. They don't mean, you know, an endgame structure like two pawns against one on one side of the board. They're talking about an opening pawn structure. So all opening pawn structures start as closed openings. How do I know they're closed? Well, it's easy. If there's no semi-open or open files for either side on the board, then it's a closed structure. So the initial position of the game is a closed structure. A lot of people use that word closed to mean like fixed or locked, like when there's a whole bunch of pawns locked together, like in the advanced variation of the French. Let's say e4, e6, d4, d5, e5. And they say, whoa, that's that you can't open up that center so it's closed. Well, that's true in the English sense of the word, but I would consider this more than just closed. I would consider this fixed. Fixed meaning the E and the D pawns can't move at all. They're up, locked up against their counterparts on the other side. So this I would consider more of a fixed pawn structure. So it's closed and it's fixed. But at the start of the game, we have a structure that's closed but extremely flexible. It could become open, it could become semi-open, it could stay closed for a while. All kinds of interesting things could happen. Okay, so let's look at some of the things that could happen. Let's look at some openings where the, the board remains closed for a while, the, the pawn structure. So let's start with e-pawn. So we could have an e4, e5 pawn structure. And here, when you have these two pawns up against each other on the fourth and fifth ranks, we have the classic break move situation where white would like to break with d4 or f4 and black would like to break with f5 or d5. Let's say neither side does that for a while, but they keep it just closed. Let's say we get something like a Joko Pianissimo, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, bishop c5, d3, d6, and now like c3, popular these days. So this is a closed Oh, a closed formation from the opening. Both sides have, still have all their eight pawns. There's been no pawn captures or pawn trades. And we have a closed opening where white is delaying playing d4 for a while and maybe not f4 at all. And black is also delaying playing d5 and maybe not f5 later or not at all. So we have these kind of closed structures but it's not nearly as fixed as that advanced French that we saw. There's only one set of pawns that are up against each other. All right, how else could this occur? Well, we could have the famous d4, d5 defense. Now the most common move for white is to play his break move, c4. He doesn't have to do that. He can remain closed. A lot of people these days want to play a London system, so that's definitely a closed system because neither side is breaking right away, although black here could play against the London with his pawn break c5. That's not unreasonable. He could do that, or very commonly he waits, and both sides just keep it closed for a while with stuff like this. And wait, a lot of times in the London never even plays c4 right away because he doesn't want to transpose into Queen's Gambit kind of line, so they just play, you know, bishop d3. And again, we have a closed structure, but it's not as fixed as maybe what we get in, um, again, the, the advanced French and some of the other lines. All right, let's say white does play the queen's gambit. It's still closed, but now white or black has the, op has the option to trade so that both sides have a semi-open file. For instance, if white plays e3, so let's say black plays e6, and white plays the passive move e3, let's say black decides to take the pawn, maybe not his best move, but now black has a semi-open D file and white has a semi-open C file. So we no longer have a, a closed position. We have what's called a semi-open position. Semi-open because both sides have semi-open files to play with. No open files, but one semi-open file. Let's say black decides never to take that pawn and just keeps playing a regular line in the queen's gambit, something like this knight f3, c6. So now again we have a closed position but hardly a locked one. Uh, all the pawns on the board are still there. 
um, we have no open or semi-open files. How could that change? Well, at some point, White might be able to take C takes D5. If he plays C takes D5, then Black has a very important decision to make. How does he want to take back? If he takes back with the C pawn, we have a symmetric position. We can get this also out of the exchange Slav variation. And now both sides have one open file. Whenever you have a position where nobody's got any semi-open files and both sides have an open file, which obviously is the same file, then it's a very symmetric kind of drawish position because both sides can put all their rooks on that file and then all the rooks get traded off. And then in the end game, because the pawns are symmetric, nobody can create a pass pawn. So you have a position where the major pieces get traded and there's no pass pawn or potential pass pawns. So we have fairly drawish positions. Usually black doesn't do that. Usually black takes with the e pawn. And when you have these queen's gambit positions where white trades his c pawn for black's e pawn, so that now white has no c pawn and black has no e pawn, and these pawns remain on d4 and d5, this is called the Carlsbad pawn structure. It's a very famous pawn structure that has all of its own ideas, and people write like entire books about how to play chess with the Carlsbad pawn structure. So this is a very famous one, and, and what kind of pawn structure is this? Well, black has one semi-open file, white has one semi-open file. It is kind of a semi-open pawn structure. All right, we've looked at e4, e5. Um, we didn't look at a lot of things in e4, e5. For instance, if white wants to break things open right away with a break move, he can play the king's gambit. He can play d4, and if black takes, which is the best way to save his pawn, White can decide to play like a Danish gambit, or he can play a center game, which isn't highly recommended because the knight will attack the queen, but this will give us that semi-open kind of position that we were talking about. By the way, if you get to this kind of position, and let's say black decides to break open the center with d5 here, now we have a completely open position where neither side has an E or D pawn, and there's no more serious pawn breaks, and this is gonna be a, a fight between the pieces. These are the kind of positions where it's okay to put your pieces in front of your pawns. The general rule is in closed positions, you wanna keep your pieces for the most part behind your pawns, and in open positions, you could just as well put your pieces in front of the pawns. So this would be an example of a position where you know, playing bishop c4 and knight f3 and things like that, you know, don't hurt you as much as they do in, in closed positions where if putting a lot of pieces in front of your pawns can lead to your opponent using those pawns to gain a lot of space. Okay, so we're just going down the line here. c4, English opening. Well, again, black could play it like a queen's gambit and play e6 and d5 and create that pressure so that possible pawn trades are made, but black doesn't have to do that. Black can play it like a reversed Sicilian when white could try to break at some point with d4, or black could try to break with d5, or neither side could do that. They could remain with kind of a closed position. For instance, suppose both sides play it like this. Knight c3, knight f6, let's say d3, g6, Knight f3, bishop g2, castle, castle, rook b1, <clears throat> knight c6, b4. So now we have a position where it's completely closed, but it's not at all locked. None of the pawns are locked up against each other. It's very fluid. And black's going to take this space that he has on the king side and try to open up lines there and attack on that side of the board. And white's taking his space advantage on the queen side and trying to push up his queenside pawns. So that would be a way of playing it. This is very similar. This is the English, but let's look at a closed Sicilian. In a closed Sicilian, e4, c5, knight c3, knight c6, let's say white decides to just play g3, g6, bishop g2, bishop g7, d3. I'm just doing it symmetrically. f4. And now black can play knight f6, or he could just play e6. Knight f3, knight g7, castle, castle, bishop e3. And again, black here could try to simply push up these pawns. The best way to do that would be to play something like rook to b8 
and then play b5 with the idea of maybe playing a5 and, and pushing these pawns down and getting space on the queen side. So once again, just like in the English, we have a completely different opening, a closed Sicilian, and they call it the closed Sicilian. The position is, again, is not locked. It's a very flexible position, but it is completely closed. It's a closed Sicilian. White has not traded off any pawns, and white has um, pushed his kingside pawns so that he's looking to attack on the king's side. Black's looking to expand on the queen's side, sort of the opposite of the line we just saw in the English, which makes some, some sense because the English, can, when black plays e5 on the first move, can be like a Sicilian reversed. All right, suppose black plays the same move that white plays and plays c5. Well, now we have what's called a symmetric English. And again, both sides can play for their break moves right away. Like white could play knight f3, knight f6, d4. This is a line, perfectly good grandmaster line in the symmetric English. Or white could kind of slow play it. You know, he could play g3, g6, bishop g2, bishop g7, e3, e6, knight g2, knight g7, knight c3, knight c6, castle, castle, and then maybe he'll go for d4. Although, although I've seen people in this kind of position continue to slow play it. They play d3. Now black could play his break d5. If he doesn't want to do it, he could play symmetric and play d6. And now, you know, white could keep it closed instead of playing for a break with b4. He can play there. Black can say, but I'm going to play for a break. And then black says, oh, look, I can play this pawn move right away because you can't take the pawn because I've got the knight pin. So we have a little, our first bit of pressure here in this very closed position. But notice a lot of these closed positions have the same kind of ideas. You know, you're you're keeping your piece. Notice how both sides have all their pieces behind the pawns here in this closed position. And both sides are looking for their pawn breaks at the appropriate time to try to add some pressure and maybe break open lines for their rooks at some point. There's just so many of these type of uh, opening pawn structures. Uh, let's look at the closed Roy Lopez. It's called the closed Roy Lopez. Let's see why. E4, E5. We have a video. If you want to see a video just on the closed Roy Lopez, the second video I ever made here on YouTube about six months ago was the learning tabiaz with the closed Roy Lopez as an example. So knight f6, castle. Now here white's offering to trade pawns. If black wants to take the pawn on e4, with knight takes e4, this is called the open variation because white can play d4. And in the main line, b5, bishop b3, d5, e takes d5. We've now traded white's d pawn for black's e pawn. So it really is sort of semi-open, but they call this the open variation of the Roy Lopez, bishop to e6. Okay, so let's go back to the closed variation. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, a6, bishop a4, knight f6, castle. So black says, I don't want to play open. I want to keep that line closed. White says, I need to guard my e-pawn now. Black says, uh-oh, you're threatening bishop takes knight, followed by knight takes pawn, removal of the guard. That's why I played a6 early when that was not going to work. Bishop b3, d6, c3, getting ready for his break move finally with d4, castle. And now d4 considered a little bit inaccurate because of bishop g4. So white does something that he doesn't do in a lot of openings, but here he does, which is to play pawn to rook 3 to prevent the bishop pin. And now we've reached the tabia of the closed Roy Lopez. And voila, look at the board. We've got two pawns up against each other, but it's not a very fixed position. And we've got the entire board where nobody's traded any pawns yet. So we have a closed position, closed Roy Lopez. All right, let's take a look at some Indian defenses. Indian defenses start out as being closed. Knight f6, c4, g6. Let's look at a king's Indian. Knight c3, bishop g7, e4, d6, bishop e2, castle, knight f3, e5, break move. It looks like that break move is not safe. It looks like white can take it. I think I have an earlier video on the tabia of the mainline king's Indian as well. And you'll see from that video that 
taking that pawn is not winning a pawn. Black can get his pawn back due to the discovered attack threat from the bishop. So the normal move here for white is castle. Black plays knight c6, and now white closes the center and locks the, the pawns, creating what we talked in earlier videos as the pointing rule, where when all four pawn, center pawns are locked together, when the E and D pawns are all up against each other with no moves, then you can put your hand across the two pawns. In this case, the E and the D pawn are always the two locked pawns we're talking about. If you use other pawns, it really doesn't work. If you put your hands across the E and D pawns, when all four center pawns are locked together, in this case, white's pawns are pointing to the queen side, so white's break move is going to be to play c5. Black pawns are pointing to the king side, so his break move is going to be f5. And here we have that locked, fixed center. It's obviously closed, but it's more than closed. This is what we would call fixed or locked. Or you want to call it extremely closed? Okay, it, this, there's, there's no official dictionary of chess. But generally, the word closed means no open or semi-open files. This is a little bit more than that. So normally, like a very popular line these days is white plays knight e1, black plays knight d7, getting ready for his break move. White plays bishop e3 to support his break move. Black plays his break move, and white supports the break with f3 so that his bishop can remain on that diagonal and be able to push push the uh, pawn up to c5 at some time in the near future. So this is a very popular line in the King's Indian. Right now the position is completely closed. If black plays f takes e4 to try to open things up, white could take with the pawn and maintain his space advantage in the center. Or let's ask Stockfish if he would do that. Uh, let's bring Stockfish up here for a second. I just downloaded Stockfish 11. Uh, okay, let's raise the window a little bit. Fix the board so it's at least partly on there. Okay, Mr. Board, let's put it back to the right size. All right, let's turn on Stockfish 11. Stockfish 11 says that White should not take with a knight at 23 ply. He's got f takes e4 at 1.2, which is a pretty big advantage. And knight takes e4 is only 0.23. So it says white should allow black to open that f file and maintain a space advantage for the middle game. So f takes e4 is Stockfish 11's best move there. And now we have that kind of position we talked about earlier where there's one open file. This is not quite as drawish as the other one open file position we looked at because white has a space advantage and black's pieces are a little cramped behind that and white can still break with c5 here and create some pressure on the queen side. So Stockfish thinks white has a pretty big advantage here. What are some other single open file positions we can get to from closed positions. Well, how about the exchange French? After e4, e6, d4, d5, suppose white plays e takes d5, e takes d5, and here we have that single open file in the middle of the board. Basically, both sides are going to put their rooks there. It'll be fairly easy to trade off the rooks. Um, we'll get a fairly symmetric position, and this position is considered kind of drawish. Notice one of the big differences between this and the position we just looked at in the King's Indian is in the King's Indian, white has a couple fixed pawns that give him a, a big space advantage in the middle. And here, the space is exactly equal between the two sides. Nobody has any more space than the other side, so there's not much advantage. White's big advantage here is that it's his move. The problem is he doesn't have the kind of tension or imbalance to make take as much advantage of the first move. So his lead here is a lot, lot smaller than it would be in, uh, let's say, that King's Indian position. And in fact, you don't see Grandmasters playing the exchange French unless it's kind of like a draw for to their opponent. It's, it's a pretty rare bird at the top Grandmaster level. All right, so this is a single open file position. How else can we get these single open file positions? How about the Petrov's defense? e4, e5, knight f3, knight takes e5 is the main move. Now knight takes e4 is a famous mistake. If you don't know how to take advantage of that, I have an earlier video on uh, some of the most 
popular or most common opening traps. Knight takes e4, looks logical to get your pawn back, but it's actually an opening trap. Black should first drive the knight away with d6, and after the knight goes back, now he takes the pawn, and the main line goes something like d4, d5, bishop d3, where white's considered to have a little bit of an advantage, although the Petros for 20 years was extremely popular opening at the Grandmaster level because black was getting fairly equally e easy equality. Later, with help of computers, white's been getting a slight advantage, uh, so you don't see the, the Petrovs quite as much as you did 5, 10, 15 years ago. But in any case, that's just at the top Grandmaster level. But here we have that same idea that we had in the Exchange French, which is the e-file is completely open, and it's very easy to trade the pieces on that file, so it could become fairly drawish. By the way, the Petrovs and the Exchange French can transpose in one into the other. For instance, the Exchange French looks like this. And white can play knight f3 and black can play knight f6. In the Petrovs, after e4, e5, knight f6, knight f3, knight f6, knight takes e5, d6, knight f3, knight takes e4. Suppose white doesn't play d4. Suppose he plays d3 first to drive the knight back, and then he plays d4, and then black plays d5 to equalize the space. Voila, guess what we have? We have a transposition when white lost that tempo to hit the knight first to drive it back by playing d3 before he played d4. We now have the exchange French. So it's always a good idea when you're get, trying to become a better player to slowly rotate your openings. You don't want to play different openings every, every game that you play. But after you play an opening for a few months and you look it up in databases and, and opening books and engines and you start to learn it really well and you learn something and you want to learn something different, it's a good idea to learn different openings and then you, you get a feel how to play different types of positions and different structures. But as you see here, some of them can transpose and some of the ideas remain the same throughout all the different openings, no matter how that happens. Um, there's actually an opening e4, d6, d5, d4, e5, much, much rarer than the French defense, where black says, white, if you want to, you can trade queen so I can't castle. So here white can take the pawn, black would best take back, white can take the queen, black would take, and it looks like white has a big advantage because black can't castle. But actually this is a perfectly reasonable opening for black if he likes queenless middle games. He's just going to play c6 and king c7. And without with the symmetric pawn structure and without the queens on the board, it's going to be very tough for white to get any kind of big advantage here. Not too many people play this, and certainly no top grandmasters play this. But it is a way to get that single one open file kind of position very, very quickly in the opening. Uh, sometimes amateurs play this when they like to play in games and they don't like games with the queens on the board. They offer this. What most white players do is they play knight f3, transposing into the main line of the Philidor. The Philidor is normally reached with e4, e5, knight f3, d6, and now the main move for white is d4, and we have the exact same position I just showed. And the Philidor is known to give white a little bit more advantage than the line where you trade queens. So keeping the pressure on, you know, gives white a little bit more play here. Notice if black wants to, he can take the pawn, and white can take back, and now we have that semi-open d-file versus the semi-open e-file, where white has a slight space advantage with the pawn on the fourth rank versus the pawn on the sixth. And with a semi-open file for both sides, you know, we've got a little bit of, of counter-pressure and a little bit of anti-drawingness to it because it's not symmetric anymore. When you get positions where one side has a complete um, pawn majority on one side of the board versus the other, which is kind of outside the scope of the video, uh, then we have even less drawage. So for instance, in the Roy Lopez, if white plays the exchange Roy Lopez, and then he plays d4 and black takes, and let's say white takes, we now have an end game where black has four pawns to three on the queen side, but though his four pawns are crippled, he can't create a passed pawn, and white has four pawns to three on the king side, which can create a pass pawn. So we have an asymmetry now in the pawn structure right away in the opening. What does black have for this crippled majority? Well, he has something very big. He has the bishop pair, 
which means that he's doing perfectly okay here. So what you, you want to do that when your opponent has some sort of compensation, like if he has the four pawn majority to three, and you don't have four to three, your four to three is crippled. You want to have something in return, and here what black has is the bishop pair. He has the two bishops when white doesn't. So that is another way to do it. Okay, so there, so we have all these different. Let's look at one last thing. Let's look at the open Sicilian. It's called the open Sicilian, but it's really a semi-open game. And that happens when white plays d4 and black plays c takes d4 and white takes back. And now black has a semi-open c file. White has a semi-open d file. And we have a nice imbalanced kind of equalization on both sides where both sides have something to play for. The computers like the white side of open Sicilians. And that's probably why we see less open Sicilians played by black than we used to. Um, but in any case, it's still an extremely popular opening. And it's it, one of the reasons it is popular is because both sides can play for a win. We don't have an easy way to trade off all the rooks, for instance, in this position. And we've got a nice little imbalance right out of the opening, which both sides can play for. So we have chances for both sides. And of course, that's the kind of position a lot of people like to play. They wanna, they wanna play openings where you know, both sides have chances to do something. Now, a lot of people wanna play openings where only they have chances to do something, but those aren't grandmaster openings. Those are openings where your opponent has made a mistake. Because if an opening is a grandmaster opening where both sides play it right, usually that means that white has a microscopic advantage. If white had any more than that, then black would avoid that line. And if white had any less than that, then the, then the white players would avoid the line. So black players avoid lines where black gets big disadvantages, and white players avoid lines where white doesn't get any advantage. And so most common grandmaster openings that you see, that, and you can check them with the computer these days, end up with white having, after you know a dozen moves or so, a, a tenth or two tenths of a pawn advantage is very common. All right, so we haven't even really scratched the surface that much from about all the different types of pawn structures you can get out of the openings, but we have laid a very, very good foundation from which you can study other things in terms of understanding what the openings are gonna look like in terms of closed, fixed, locked, semi-open, open, and so on. All right, hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, if you enjoyed it a lot, check out some of my other videos, maybe even subscribe to the channel. I appreciate your help, and I will see you next time. Thanks, bye.